We know that a cube is a special type of prism made up of six square faces. We also know that a net is a flat pattern of our three-dimensional figure that can be folded along the edges to make our solid. When we take our cube and want to make it into a net, there are 11 different ways that we can flatten our cube into a net. Here they are and we're going to test them all out. We're going to start by arranging our squares in a capital T to make the first net of our cube. It doesn't matter if we put our three across at the top or at the bottom because either way, one would just be a rotation of the other. So let's go back to our original arrangement and test to make sure it works. We can fold up these two sides and then wrap these around the front, top, and back and see that it does indeed form a cube. Keeping with that same idea, we're going to move our three across to the second level. Again, it's not going to matter if we put our three across at the second level or the third level because one is simply a rotation of the other. So let's go back to our original arrangement and test to make sure this one works also. We're going to fold up the left and right, there's the back, and then flip these two around to make the front and the top. And again, we fold up to make a cube. We're going to go back to our T and start by keeping one side the same and sliding the square of the other along the opposite side touching each different square. It doesn't matter which side we keep the same and which side we move because one would just be a reflection of the other. So here's our first one, the top one and the second one. So let's work by folding those up and then folding that around and we can see that one does indeed make a cube. Keeping that same idea going, we're going to have one attached, attached to the top and one attached to the third level. We can then take those, fold those up and around, and we see that arrangement also makes a cube. Finishing up that idea, we can have one attached to the top, and one attached to the bottom, and then we can wrap those around and see that we do finish it off, and it also makes a cube using that arrangement. Going back to our arrangement where we had three across in the middle, we're going to do that same idea. Keep one side the same and move the other side. Again, it's not going to matter which side we move because one arrangement would just be a reflection of the other. To test to see if it works, we can start by folding our sides up, rolling it around, and when we do, we see that it does also fold up to make our cube. We're once again going to rearrange our T by moving one square from the bottom and adding it up here to the top. When we do that, we see that we can still fold up our faces in order to make a cube. Keeping that idea going, we're going to keep one side the same and move our square down along the opposite side. Again, it doesn't matter which side we keep the same and which side we move because one is going to be a reflection of the other. We can see as we work to fold those together that all of our faces are going to go together and create a cube. We can slide that face down one more time so it's attached along the bottom, and when we do, that one also goes together to create our cube. In this arrangement, all of our squares are grouped together in groups of two. We can still fold them up though and create our cube as each face has a spot on our polyhedron making up our cube. Keeping with that same idea, we can then go to our last net. Here we have our squares arranged in groups of three, but when we fold them up, each square is going to have a face on our cube, finishing off all 11 nets, and all 11 nets work for our cube. 